All right, Hillary Clinton may be getting closer to making it official. After her team signed a lease for a big office space in Brooklyn, New York, the feds give candidates 15 days to create a committee after what it calls campaign activity. Well, that includes leasing an office. Meanwhile, questions about her email continue to swirl. Let's bring in our political panel to discuss this. Richard Fowler, a Democratic strategist and radio talk show host, and Deneen Borelli, a Fox News contributor. Good to see you both this Hi, afternoon. Kelly. Good to be here, Kelly. Okay, so simple question here. Why is Hillary Clinton leasing a large office space, some 80,000 square feet, by the way, in Brooklyn Heights, New York? Is she gearing up for another run for the presidency? Deneen, let's begin with you. Ladies first. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure she is. And uh, listen, I view Hillary Clinton as an icon of the political elite. She's opening the office up in Brooklyn. Uh, listen, I, I find it very comical and, and, and cynical that they're trying to position her as a woman of the peeps, so to speak, uh, where she's much more comfortable perhaps being in a Wall Street office with uh, Goldman Sachs because she is an elitist. And, uh, and again, I, I don't see her being someone that's relatable and personal to Americans. Wow, Richard, does America have time for an elitist who's unrelatable and personable to Americans? Well, here's the thing about Hillary Clinton. There's no question that she's had some years of being, I guess, quote unquote, elite in Deneen's words. But the truth of the matter is, is that her and her husband, they really are the, the American dream. They came from nothing, built a political empire, and for that, they shouldn't be faulted for it. But let's be, let's be real. So she has leased an office. It is clear that she's probably considering maybe making a run for president or opening a Fortune 500 company. Who knows? But clearly here, I think what, no matter what happens, I think that she's going to be a very formidable nominee uh, and she's going to be able to sort of push forward her ideals and what she thinks the country needs. You know, Richard, part of the time as you were discussing this, we were actually showing video or at least pictures of Hillary Clinton messing with that famous BlackBerry and those emails. And of course, you know, State Department information was on that as well, public, private. So what's all the trouble surrounding her emails and how may that have some impact on her as she moves forward with a likely presidential run? Well, here's the thing. I think her emails, you know, they are clearly, they really negatively affected her popularity amongst the American people, and she's going to have to answer some questions about that. And I think Hillary Clinton's been open to answer those questions. She's turned over all of her emails to the State Department, and she's even went to the Republican committee uh, on the House side and said, hey, listen, I'm willing to have a public meeting. Bring me in, put me under oath, and let's have a public meeting to discuss how these emails might relate to Benghazi, and let's move forward. Republicans are the ones who are saying we want a private meeting and not a public meeting, which to me is a red flag. There might be but, some, but, you know, well, more Kabuki theater I, and here. I'm glad you, okay, Kabuki theater, but I'm glad he brought that up, uh, Denise, because the the other side of the equation is, what does Hillary gain if she goes publicly with this? Because wouldn't that limit how many questions, tough questions, the panel or the House Select Committee could ask? Well, listen, I think it's a good move to make it a private meeting because what we don't want is the media circus surrounding this situation. And again, you know, why does she delete the emails and why does she wipe clean the server? How come she didn't come clean with what the information that was she was subpoenaed to provide? Uh, what does Hillary Clinton have to hide? And Richard mentioned that the Clintons are the uh, story of the American dream. I find them to be the American nightmare because they're surrounded by one controversy after another. Other, and I think Americans are really tired of it. Well, here's the thing, Kelly. I'm sorry. I mean, Deneen, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. Either you want these emails to be public and you want the public to we sort of... We wanted them Hillary, months ago. But, wait, but why, then, why have a private meeting? Why, why not have well, a public here's, meeting let me, let, me, under let me interject in here with, with both of you. The reason why I ask this question, if it's a private meeting, they can ask those kinds of questions that would remain, uh, for all intents and purposes, confidential, top secret, transcribing it so that at a later date that transcription can be read. But with that, that would give Trey Gowdy and the other members of the House Select Committee time to ask those questions that are pertinent to what happened at the U.S. consulate under Hillary Clinton's watch that took the lives of four Americans at Benghazi. Exactly. And we want to get to the bottom of that, Kelly. But I think uh, Hillary should be more concerned about Valerie Jarrett leaking information than Trey Gowdy this possibly is leaking this is information. This is all part of the kabuki theater that I'm talking about Kelly, no, but I want to go back truth. to. I, but, yeah, let's have the truth and listen. Our Congress ought to reflect our country, a true and real democracy where everything is heard, everything is publicly transparent. Why have a meeting behind closed doors in a smoke filled room with Republican members of Congress when you can have a meeting in front of the public where the public can actually come into the meeting? Okay, right? when you so have a meeting, the public can show up to the both. meeting and hear. Let's do confidential, <laughs> let's do 
open. Give it all to the American people as long as we're talking about transparency. But with that, I got to end. I didn't want to end with the last word, but I, I guess we have to do it that way. Happy Easter. Because the clock is <laughs> Happy ticking. Easter, Happy Kelly. Easter to Happy all Easter, of you. Happy Easter, Dina. Happy right, Passover, everybody. Thanks, guys.